to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And unfortunately for the New York Giants, the 2021 offseason has officially begun. But as I said on Twitter today, for your diehard New York Giants fans, which most of the people on my page are, New York Giants season is 12 months. It's not five. People don't check out after five months unless you're just a fan who doesn't get into it in the offseason. But there is a lot uh, to talk about for the New York Giants this offseason and what needs to be done. What I'm waiting for in terms of free agency, which is probably what I'm going to start with, and the rumor videos in the cap space before we dive extensively into the draft, is to see the direction of this football team. And I'm waiting on word about Dave Gettleman. From what I heard, he's uh, supposed to speak to the press, I think, tomorrow or the day after that. And that is when, as Giants fans, we will have our answer um, to the future of this team and the direction that they're going. And if Gettleman is back or they stay in-house, I think the direction is clear. Giants try to continue to build off of this rebuild. They try to stay the course. If they bring in an outsider, it opens up a lot of question marks. Could bring in a quarterback. Could, you know, completely blow this thing up. Try to get rid of players, not bring back guys like Leonard Williams, things like that. So I think for our questions to start to be answered, we have to know who the man is in charge. Now, I've heard rumors from Mike Garoppolo, who is very um, credible, that he believes from what he is hearing that the New York Giants will stay stay with Gettleman. But I've also heard from other people that he may have a reduced role. Nobody is saying, for the most part, at this point, that he will be fired. But anything can happen. Um, and ownership seems like they want to talk things over before they come to a final conclusion. We're going to have to wait and see with that. But the one thing I wanted to start with for this offseason was kind of to dive into, and I'll probably do cap space tomorrow, was kind of to dive into next year's schedule as it has come out. We don't know the order. But we know the opponents, and we know where they're going to be played. Now, one thing I want to make note of is it's going to be a 17-game schedule. Uh, this is only 16 games. What I read, what the NFL is going to do for that 17th game, the way they're going to determine it is they're going to go into the opposing conference, and they're going to pick a team in the spot in the division that we finished um, in one of the other AFC divisions. For instance, the New York Giants finished second this year which is actually incredibly beneficial for our schedule. And I'm going to say, or at least in my opinion, based off of next year, and I'm going to say why in this video. But if we finish second in this division, we're, play, we're playing the AFC West this year. The way that they are assuming it's going to work is we will be matched up against a team that finished second in another outside AFC division. That would leave one of three divisions outside of the AFC West. That, of course, being the AFC North with the Baltimore Ravens, who I don't think anybody is rushing to play, the Indianapolis Colts in the AFC South, and in the AFC East, you have the Miami Dolphins. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick the Dolphins, but all three of those teams are very good. Um, but the AFC is a stacked conference, so you shouldn't be too surprised there. In terms of the rest of our schedule, in, in you know, in comparing it to this year, I think we do have a more favorable schedule, and we're going to get into all of it in this video. I'm not saying it's a cupcake. It's definitely not, but I think it's more favorable. I think I see more winnable games on this schedule, at least as of now. We don't know how these teams are going to look after the offseason and everything else, but based off the direction where these teams are trending, I think we have more winnable games on this schedule than we did in last year's. Last year, out of the eight um, non-divisional opponents that we played you know, in the divisions, that being the AFC North and the NFC West, five of them made the playoffs. Uh, th you know, Three in the AFC North, two in the AFC West, uh, and, and in, I'm sorry, in the NFC West. And the only uh, team that didn't make it in the North was the Bengals, who obviously was a very winnable game, especially after Burrow went down. In the other division, the NFC West was loaded. Uh, the Rams made the playoffs, like I said, and so did Seattle. San Francisco going in looked like a very tough opponent. Of course, they sustained injuries, but they were coming off a Super Bowl appearance, and everybody was very high on the Arizona Cardinals. But we played a very challenging schedule last year. This year, I think it, I think it eases up a little bit, and we're going to jump into it. And I'm going to tell you why I think it's a benefit in terms of scheduling why the New York Giants finished second as opposed to first. You think about first, the two divisions outside of the NFC uh, South, the division we're playing, the NFC North and the NFC West, Washington with a first place schedule will have to play Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. I'm not too sure where that's going to be. And in addition to that, in the NFC West, they'll have to play Russell Wilson uh, and the Seattle Seahawks. We're going to jump into exactly who we're playing, but let's pull up the schedule right now. And by the way, sorry for the camera quality. It's just so much easier for me to pull up these slides and these quotes when I use the laptop. I'm going to be working on a new camera um, probably in about a month. I'm going to have a much better setup, but I just want to let you guys know that. This is our schedule home and away. And you look at it. You look at the teams, how they did this year. 
All right, we're going to start with the NFC South. That's who we're playing. Two games at home, two games on the road. The two home games will be the Atlanta Falcons. Missed the playoffs, in my opinion, trending down. They may even be in the market to draft a quarterback this year, even though Matt Ryan still has three years left on his contract. We're going to have to wait and see there. But regardless, I definitely think the Atlanta Falcons are trending down. They're picking fourth overall. The Carolina Panthers are still a young team that's emerging. Very much, very possible will be in the market for a quarterback as well. Um, and if that's the case, you figure a rookie quarterback coming in, maybe they start with Bridgewater. They've got weapons over there. I'm not telling you they're a cupcake, but it's a much more winnable game than a lot of the other games we had on our schedule this year. Um, in terms of the other two NFC South games, you got the Tampa Bay Bucks, you got the New Orleans Saints, which of course are the cream of the crop of that division. The Bucks right now, the hottest team in the NFC. And even if Brady does move on, which I don't think he will, he's playing at a near Pro Bowl level. They still have a good team. They still have a lot of talent on that team. But if Brady were to move on, they'd probably have a young quarterback and they'd be much more you know, much, you know, more reasonable that we could get a W. The Saints, you figure they're going to move on from Breeze. Breeze already uh, said, I think, that he's going to retire. But we're playing away. It's really hard to win in New Orleans. We all know that to begin with. Taysom Hill would probably be the quarterback. Um, and they showed that they can win games with Hill. But you figure it's not the Breeze of old. Um, maybe the Saints are a lot, you know, a lot more beatable than you may think. In terms of the AFC West... The four teams, the two home games we got were against the Raiders and the Broncos. Uh, the home games were against the, uh, the away games rather, were against the Chiefs and the Chargers. And I think our home schedule, when you really dive into it, is pretty favorable. The away schedule is where it gets hard. Um, our two non-divisional games in terms of where we matched up in the division, we play the Bears um, in the NFC North because we both finished second in our divisions. And when you think about that NFC North, yeah, the Lions are more favorable probably. They're going to be in complete rebuild mode. Um, but the Packers are far better. And in my opinion, I think the Vikings are far better. The Vikings are a young team who had a lot of draft capital and they kind of took a while to hit their stride. But going into next year, I think I would much rather play the Chicago Bears than the Minnesota Vikings. So I think the Giants lucked out there. And I think they lucked out with the Rams as well. They play the Rams because they finished second in the NFC West, as we did in the NFC East. And when you look at the NFC West, they, I think, outkicked the coverage this year. The 49ers, in my opinion, could very well rebound next year. They still have a very good team. If they get that quarterback situation situated, they could very well rebound. The Cardinals are definitely a team on the come up. Um, and then, of course, you got the Seattle Seahawks, and you always got to respect Russell Wilson. I definitely respect the Rams, but a lot of people had them falling off before the year started. I think they surprised some people. And they started to tail off a little bit towards the end, um, but they did hold on. And, and, and I'm not telling you this is an easy team, but of the teams that we could have potentially drawn, I don't think we did too bad there either. But overall, looking at this schedule, and then of course you have the division, which I'll talk about. The home games, I, I think the Falcons are incredibly winnable. I think we should win. I, I think we should beat the Panthers at home. The Raiders, there were, I would much rather get the Raiders in the second half. They seem to be a team that always falls off in the second half. They always seem to get off to a hot start. Um, and the same thing could be said for the Panthers, because I do think it's very likely the Panthers may have a rookie quarterback. I'd almost want to get them at the beginning, even though Bridgewater would probably be the starter to begin. So a lot of this also depends on when you get these teams in the schedule. The Broncos are not good. They're, they're just not a good football team. Um, and I don't see them trending up. And the fact that it's home, they're traveling across the country. I think we could easily win all four of those games. I think you're looking at probably three out of four right now, if you ask me today, before I see the offseason. The Rams, I think we could go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We showed it this year. They've got cap situation problems of their own. They're not going to be drafting high. I think the gap, you know, lessens in the offseason. And the fact that it's at home, yeah, we went to L.A. last year. We lost 17-9. to I think we could go, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with them at home. And then in the division, I mean, I think, you know, again, we don't know what the teams are going to look like. But I think we stack up pretty well with a lot of these teams in the division. We won four games this year, could have won six. You figure Dak will be back, um, and that changes things with Dallas. But the Eagles, to me, are going nowhere fast. You saw Hurts last night. He's not super impressive. They got cap problems. I'm sure they'll add a receiver in the draft. Washington, they're going to be picking 19th. They're going to be playing a first-place schedule now. Like I said, is now going to be the Green Bay Packers in the north as opposed to the Bears for us. Um, and in the uh, West, they'll be playing Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks, and they're not going to be able to bring in a quarterback, more than likely picking a 19, unless they do it in free agency. And one name I've talked about potentially is Matt Stafford, that they could trade for if the Lions are moving on, but then you're mortgaging your future. So we'll see what Washington decides to do there, but I do think we stack up fairly well in the division. As far as the away schedule, I mean, Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs, I don't see us going arrowhead and winning. It'll be an entertaining game to watch. 
Uh, Justin Herbert and the Chiefs will be really interesting. He's a quarterback that a lot of Giants fans wanted, and we'll see how he progresses in year two. You know, a lot of people were going crazy about Daniel Jones, too, and you saw him take a step back this year, and maybe he will, maybe he won't. Herbert definitely has a lot of talent. Um, the Chargers may have a new head coach, though. You know, a lot of people talk about that moving on from Anthony Lynn. We'll see there. If you bring in a new head coach, it may take a little while for them to adjust. Maybe, again, a team that you want to see at the beginning of the schedule. The Bucks, I figure Brady will be back. They'll still be a good team. The Breeze, uh, Breeze being gone from the Saints should make that more winnable. But in New Orleans, of course, is going to be challenging. The Bears in Chicago, I think it's a winnable game. I think they outkicked the coverage this year. I think we'll be right there with them. Probably should have beat them, in my opinion, this year had we played them five or six weeks later. Um, I think they benefited from playing us early in the year. And then, you, you know, you close it out with the three division games. But overall, I look at that schedule, and I'm not, in, you know, I'm not intimidated. I don't look at those games and say to myself, oh, my God, this, this schedule is brutal. No, I think the Giants can be competitive next year. It's going to take a strong offseason. It's going to take growth from this football team. Um, and Daniel Jones, of course, jumping to that next level. But I do think the Giants can compete in 2021. And the schedule is not nearly, in my opinion, as challenging as the previous year. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out. Cannot wait to continue to cover this team in the offseason. As always, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe. Give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.